Have you lost your job? Have you lost a loved one? Are you exhausted caring for your parents, for your kids? Well, you can find immediate relief when you read Sheila Mack's new number one bestseller, Bootstraps and Bra Straps. It contains the boots formula to move from rock bottom back into action in any situation, especially right now. If life has knocked you down, pick yourself up with bootstraps and bra straps. Get your copy at www. Sheila Mack. Are you ready for a reboot? Welcome to the Sheila Mack Show. Reality at its finest. History reminds us those hit hardest often become the change makers. This year, we've all hit crazy economic, social, and emotional rock bottoms. We all get knocked down. Something hits globally, locally, personally. It affects our health, finances, our relationships. We have to recreate a business or career. Each show, Sheila and her special guest will be sharing their reboot stories, guiding you with real solutions to upgrade and up-level emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, and financially. Here on NBC's KCAA Radio, if you're ready to pull yourself up by the bootstraps and bra straps, enjoy a listen. Here's Sheila. Welcome to the Sheila Mack Show, reality at its finest. Here we have real people sharing real stories and actionable steps to help you reinvent, rebuild, and reboot your business and personal life on your terms. I'm your host, Sheila Mack, and today we have special guest Rick White. Rick often says he is an unremarkable man that has been blessed with truly remarkable mentors. His book is a collection of the mentor's wisdom and how it may bring a positive outlook to others. He has lived an incredibly blessed life and has learned, used, and forgotten to use many of the lessons of he received from his mentors. Rick's book is for anyone that has had enough with the negativity, socially, emotionally, politically, and in any way where they can say enough is enough. All right, welcome to the show, Rick. Thank you so much, and thank you so much for having me on. Yes, and one of the things I like to start with is this show actually came about after my new best-selling book, Bootstraps and Bra Straps, the formula to go from rock bottom back into action in any situation, and I wrote it right before the pandemic. <laughs> I had no idea, no crystal ball, but anyway, um, things have happened that we couldn't even fathom before, and so I'd like to start off with maybe if you have a time in your business or personal life that you can share with the audience where you experienced a difficult situation and how you got back on track. Sure. Uh, and actually, the first thing that comes to mind is when I really began my journey to where I'm still heading. It was my first uh, epiphany. As a younger man, I found myself in situations that brought me from feeling on top of the world to feeling like I was kicked in the gut. Mm. Uh, this is no different than 99% of all the people in the world. It is often referred to as life happens. Mm -hmm. While in California, where much of my awakening really took place, I was introduced to a gentleman called Von Meter. If the name sounds familiar, he was a comedian that did an album called The First Family, where he did a truly fantastic impression of President John F. Kennedy. And I personally found him to be a brilliant person with amazing mental acuity. And while I was complaining to him about how I had just been brought down by some really crazy incident, which related to my business, he listened quietly. And when he spoke, it was, he, he said, life gives people a gut punch, but normally they get angry or upset and they try too hard to fight to get back to that high mm -hmm. that they experienced before they had that gut punch. He said, trying too hard to fight to get to that place you were in before was counterproductive to getting back to where you wanted to be. Mm -hmm. Now, we all want to live the best life possible, being on top of the world. The best way to get there was to try, is try and stop fighting against whatever that negative situation is that we find ourselves. Mm. That creates the negative energy that surrounds your entirety and makes it harder 
for the positive energy to get to you. So if you stop fighting and release that negativity, the positive energy will find you more easily and help you get back to where you're on top of the world. Now, as I thought about what he said, I try to think of a way that I might be able to pass that on to someone else. It was an awareness for me and on countless occasions it changed my reality. My first thought was being on top of the world as a vision of trying to stay there by uh, being on top of logs and doing log rolling. And then came a vision of a water wheel. Uh, the gut punch was simply a way to see myself falling or getting pushed off the wheel into the churning water below, a long way down. And it always seems that when this happens, you move in that same direction as the wheel. So you go from the top of the wheel to the churning waters below. Trying to fight those waters is the equivalent of negativity. By simply ending my fight and relaxing my efforts, letting go, I simply thought of just letting go, relaxing, reaching my arm up, and letting one of the paddles from the water wheel catch my hand and carry me back to the top of the wheel. That was one of the most important lessons that I have ever gone through and that I still go through even at times today. Stop fighting what you feel is that negativity. Mm. Beautiful. Yes. There's something about that, that surrender is so hard for us, especially if we're type A. <laughs> surrender? What are you talking about? <laughs> we just need to work harder. And so that does, it makes a real difference when we when we learn to do that. And it's almost like, I don't know, I feel like the universe, source, whatever you want to say is out there, the powers that be. It's, it's like the more we don't surrender, the more challenges will show up until we finally do. I totally agree. And I, I, I believe that's part of what he was trying to say to me. Yes. Now, so um, you wrote a book about this. And um, how did you, what made you decide to write the book? Okay. The book covers a huge amount of information. The book is actually 89 photographs mm -hmm. with wording that, denotes something that I felt was important. The way it came about is I have a 22 year old grandson. Uh -huh. And my first thought was I was gonna write a book about he and I, fictitious book. Mm -hmm. And then as I started to write it, I realized that was not going to leave him an impression of who his grandfather was. Mm -hmm. So I have been working with people for many, many years with the lessons that I have learned, trying to help people, again, move from a negative to a positive, become more aware how to deal with grief, uh, things with friendship. I mean, it covers so many different areas. And I started writing the book for him. Oh, and that's how this book came about. And it's something that I will leave him and he will have some understanding of who I was as a human being. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is so important. There's something about leaving a legacy. Now, what? how long did it take you to write your book? The book took me about six months to put together. But what's interesting is most of the information in this book is information that I have been sharing verbally with people mm -hmm. for many, many years. I just never put it into a written format, nor put it into a way that I could try to reach as many people as possible. Right. Yes. So that that takes some time, especially if you haven't written a book before. <laughs> There's a lot that goes into that. And um, I'd love to hear maybe about uh, one of your favorite chapters, some of the topics in the book um, a little bit more. Okay. Well, one of the... Uh, Easier things is, as I said, the, the book is mostly photographs. Mm -hmm. And those photographs basically have something written on them that we need you to think about. 
I'm going to look down so I don't misquote myself <laughs> and talk to you about friendship. Okay. Friendship is truly an incredibly unique, loving relationship. Your true friend knows you as well as anyone in your life and sees all the characteristics in you that they value as well as those they really dislike. Honest love for you continues because even with knowing you and all your most dislikable traits, whatever, what really matters is that it doesn't. And that's what friendship is about. It doesn't matter what your negative traits are. Right. If you're my friend, I accept you for who you are. And I see the positivity of our relationship. The negative is meaningless. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. And so that's what matters, that it doesn't. There's something about that in life that we, we get handed these situations when we're young and <laughs> and we're learning how to make friends and connect with people and life life will send us into different directions. I was very blessed with, as a young child, staying with grandparents and, and beautiful elders from all over because I lived in Los Angeles, California. So I had people from all over the world, these beautiful older ladies that were probably in their eighties when I was five, you know, that that shared their stories. They went through the Spanish flu. They went through the depression. They went through so many situations and came from different parts of our, our planet. So I had this living history and it really made a difference. And then later I found myself with parents sick. I ended up in foster care, homeless for a while, back and forth with different people. Uh, and I got to meet all these other people and see their stories. And there's a connection, a web that connects us all that really, when you're able to find that, I mean, that to me, that experience was part of my required training for life. I, I hear what you're saying. And I relate to that because of the innumerable people who have come into my life and shared their wisdom, mm -hmm. shared their stories. Uh, one of my most amazing mentors was a gentleman named Dr. Bill Swartley. Bill used to run a, a place in New Jersey where he worked with groups to try and help people psychologically. He was a psychologist, but he had been to Tibet and spent many, many, many months there learning things that he didn't learn in school for his psychology. And Bill said to me, I think one of the most important things that, that I've written in the book at all, and that's how do we deal with trauma? Mm. Because all of us have trauma. And he said to deal with trauma, you need to realize three things. Very difficult, but you need to realize them. You need to face, embrace, and erase. So what he is saying is you need to accept the trauma that's happened, understand it, accept it. And then the most difficult thing you will ever do is put your arms around it and embrace that trauma. No matter how painful, no matter how difficult, you have to truly embrace it. Once you've embraced it, you erase it. It no longer is your trauma. Mm. And it's absolutely true. Difficult, incredibly difficult in some cases, mm -hmm. but true. Uh, you know, I am currently, uh, well, we call them an end stage renal failure. Mm. So I have a limited amount of time that remains for me. But that is not important. I can embrace the fact that I'm still here. And that despite the fact that I go to dialysis three days a week, I have a great life. So the trauma of knowing or being involved with that is meaningless. It, and I, I, I can't 
tell people how sincerely I feel that I'm not in any way encumbered mm -hmm. other than the time factor that I go to dialysis, but I'm not encumbered by a disease that is going to end my life. Mm. Yes, that is something that we're all going to face this sometimes in a second, in an instant, and sometimes we get a, a warning in advance and maybe we all have a knowing of our times here and it's it's part of the cycle, but it's something nobody talks about. Nobody shares um, the experience um, or it's, a, it's almost like we're not going to talk about this somebody you lose a loved one and nobody really wants to talk about it much or just facing your own mortality. And it's something that we all face. And it's, it's almost, I, I raised these six children and we'd, we'd have pets, we'd lose pets, we'd have funerals, ceremonies, we'd talk, we'd cry. I wanted to have the experience of understanding that when we lost all the elders, grandparents, all those beautiful elders I mentioned were all close with my children also and into their very old years. Some of them lived over a hundred and it, it was something that we really honored that, that time and talked openly about it. And many people, their friends, other people, even my age group, they didn't talk about these things. It's you're, interesting. You're, you're right. And we're, we've just come through a period of time where grief has become one of the most dominant traumas that we're facing. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's, it's inconceivable to think of 600,000 deaths and how many millions of people those deaths have affected and caused to deal with uh, the depths of their grief. So I'm going to, if I may, mm -hmm. I'd like to read one more section of what I've written in the book that deals with grief mm. and that people, everybody deals with grief differently. And in the initial phases of grief, it's impossible to really bring your head to a place where I'm going to suggest that you go. Yeah. But here's what I do write about grief. Mm. When you feel and can embrace the pain of a loved one missing, from that reality, which was your every single day, hold on to that feeling mm. and the reason that it hurts so deeply. That feeling, that pain is the immensity of the love you feel. Embrace that and you embrace your beloved. Yeah. Beautiful. So just another way to deal with grief takes a while to do that. But when you can do that, you, you turn it completely around and understand the depth of love from the depth mm -hmm. of pain. Yes. Yes. And it's something, I mean, I think in the United States, most employers give people five days to grieve, I, like really <laughs> five days? That's that's not even time to make plans in, in many situations with the way things are right now, um, it's hard. And it takes months and years and you feel like it was yesterday and it was, you know, a while ago. And so you have to honor that time. And I think with my children, I did that. And we did lose my youngest son last December he was 22 years young. He had a heart condition uh, since fifth grade, but it, they did treatments and said he should be fine. He could live a long life, but no one knows. So I worried. Everybody worries, but we're like, okay, live your fullest life. And when all my kids came home to spend time with me, and then the pandemic hit right after that. And it was like, if you want to cry, if you need to hit a pillow, if we need to wake me up at three in the morning and we're going to cry together all night, fine. And I put the book on hold. I put things on hold. And that didn't come out until later because I needed to go through that process. And we have holidays. We still have. I'm, today's Father's Day. My my uh, father passed away on Father's Day. And so it's, it's oh, one of those, a long time ago. But it's still, it's, you know, it's his day. And so it's one of those things that you, you learn to have a different connection with those loved ones that are beyond. 
And there's times and holidays and seasons where it does hit us harder, but it is that love and that connection. And it's, it's like, honor that don't live there. You don't have to live in the sorrow every single moment, but give it time. And I feel like it's almost like when we let it out, the grieving, the emotions out, it helps us to not get diseases or illnesses because when we keep it in, our body will manifest something. Absolutely. Yeah. The, we will feel the pain in one way or another. So it's best to let that out. Yeah. And again, uh, you know, I, I'm so sorry for the loss of your dad and the loss of your son. I cannot even imagine that. I lost both my parents on the same day, oh. uh, but I've never lost a child. I lost a, a younger sister, but I never lost a child. Thank God. Mm -hmm. uh, in any event, uh, you, you definitely need to let the grief out. Yeah. But if you can turn the grief around, Mm -hmm. to make it into the love, to feel that experience that, again, to me, the depth of the grief is the depth of your love. Mm. And that changes things dramatically yeah. when when you look at what's gone down and what, what's mm -hmm. happened in your past. Yes. And in the beginning and the end in life, that's all there is, is love. Yes. That's all that matters. Everything else is just the stuff. <laughs> yeah, every day, you know, is a day of experience, challenge, and hopefully wonder. Yes, yes. Now, what is the name of your book? The book is called Before and Beyond Understanding, mm. A Different Way to Deal with a Difficult Time. Beautiful. Love it. Now, is this book available on Amazon, Audible? Mm -hmm. Uh, this book is available on my website of the same name, Before and Beyond Understanding. So it's www.beforeandbeyondunderstanding.com. Mm. And you can read about the book there and purchase it right online. Or you can go to uh, my Facebook page, which is just Before and Beyond Understanding. And you can read a lot more about it there. And I also go into uh, a little bit of definition on some of the areas that I covered in the book. Nice, nice. So now one of the questions I usually ask my guests is, if you could go back in time, what would you tell your younger, let's say a 10 year old self, what advice would you give yourself for the journey? <laughs> if I was able to talk to my 10 year old self, I would say, stop being angry. Mm. Uh, I grew up very angry. Uh, I grew up, uh, a borderline uh, dangerous because I was so angry all the time. And I am not in any way, shape or form advocating that anybody do drugs of any kind. But I will say that what turned me completely around was experience that I had with psychotropic drugs. And that guided properly. Mm -hmm. uh, I was able to completely change my understanding of my reality. And again, I don't recommend that anybody go out and do, you know, uh, LSD or any other drugs. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you that I would tell my 10 year old self, open your eyes yeah. and give yourself an opportunity. Yes. And, you know, I think at 10, we don't have the veil of all this, this junk that we've been taught. So we wouldn't need anything yeah. to connect. We're already so connected. And then we learn to unlearn all that we already know. So true. Hope. Yes. So that's something. And obviously as a mom with, with, I adopted three, three of my own, they're all mine, but um, with all these kids that are now college and above, um, I obviously don't, don't recommend the drug route either. <laughs> uh, there is ayahuasca and I have friends that have done that and had great experiences similar to what you said. And so that's something if you're looking for that route, there's many other ways, uh, uh, prayer, meditation, changing your life, therapy, working with a, a consultant, a coach. Uh, there's so many different ways to do this self-reflection journey. And so it's, it's a choice. And, and something that 
I think it's very individualized. And, and I want to be very clear that I did not do that as a continuum. Mm -hmm. uh, it opened my eyes to allow me to uh, be aware of a lot of other things in life that I would not have been open to in my earlier years. Uh, people who have uh, shown other ways of dealing with life, which I try to do in my book now. Mm. The book is not about drugs. The book is about the lessons that I learned from uh, entities that were being uh, brought through other people. Yes. Uh, which I found to be astounding uh, and very important. Uh, one entity that I came in contact with <laughs> through a woman named Jay-Z Knight was an entity called Ramtha. Mm. And in a session that I was with uh, probably 50 other people, uh, we were in a gymnasium and I was having a, an issue going on with my kid sister who unfortunately was using uh, drugs and I was very concerned about her daughter. And in, in meditation, Ramtha came over to me and yes, said, this is really funny. I have a spider. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. How interesting. What a sign. Go ahead. Continue. There must be something to that. I've never had that before. I jumped out. I don't know. I don't know. But <laughs> he... Keep going. There's an energy there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, hopefully it's a good one. Uh, in any event, he came over to me and he said to me, and this is out of the clear blue. I hadn't said a word to anyone. He said, how dare you consider injecting yourself into their lives? Now, my thought was I was going to call Child mm. Protective Services. Mm -hmm. He says, that's not up to you. They are on the path they have chosen. You're not on their path. Mm -hmm. So don't interfere. Your, your niece will be fine and your sister will will be where she's going to be. And that came out of clear blue. No one could have known that. Yes. So my belief in uh, the fact that people can actually, you know, transform their reality and uh, get someone literally through them to be able to speak to others Mm -hmm. is something that I would not have possibly believed in my earlier year, in my earlier years. So this was a channeling kind of a, a person that had a channeling experience that told you this. That's precisely right. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's so interesting. Um, yeah. I've had quite a few experiences with that too. And I call it a guiding. It's like when we're guided. So, and I think it's almost like we all have certain guidings like maybe an intuitive thought of don't go down that street. Don't go to that party tonight. And if you listen, all is well. If you mm. don't listen, you get the consequences of not listening. And 99.9% .9 of the time it's right. And most of the time people are like, oh, that's a silly thought. Why am I thinking that? And you try to make sense of it from the mental mind instead of that spiritual place. No, right. And and you excuse it. Oh, that's silly. That no, I mean, uh, just say a prayer over it. Let's go. But there's something to it. So I've learned just what, whatever it is, I listen because whatever that is knows more than I do. <laughs> yes. And also consider at some point in your life, you did something that should have caused you tremendous harm, mm. but somehow, some way, something prevented that harm yeah. from striking you. I believe those are your guardian angels. Mm -hmm. When I was very young, like about six or seven years old, I was riding along the railroad tracks and I started falling. I was on my bike toward the third rail. Mm. And in my mind, I thought I was going to be electrocuted. Oh, wow. Somehow the bike just moved in a way yeah. that the rubber grip on the handlebar hit the third rail 
and I bounced away and off and wasn't harmed. Mm. I believe that was my guardian angel because that has happened to me a whole bunch of times in my life where mm. I should have been either severely injured or even passed, I should have died and right. didn't. And I believe that that's, that's more than your inner spirit, that's your inner spirit connecting with your guardian spirit. spirit. Mm -hmm. It's just my belief. Yes. Yes. And most people will, oh, well, that was, that was something, but it yeah, was. Coincidence. Something. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's, it's so interesting how these things happen. And I get hundreds, I have hundreds of those in my, my time as well. And yes. you know, it, it's just so strange. I mean, my car, my children were in the car once and we were struck by lightning, but it went through the car, but all the power in the car went out. <laughs> and then it went back on and we were on, on a canyon road and it was like, yes, that just happened. What Incredible. Was, what was, and we were, and the kids were like, what the, I mean, cause this happens, you can't even think and it's, it's over. But the car was like, yeah, that happened because then it didn't work <laughs> right. it down this canyon. And so I was like, please turn back on. <laughs> and yeah. So, so there are so many times and it's, it's like a reminder we have to that that point of the beginning of the show here where you introduce your your book and and your thoughts on things that surrender right yeah reminding us that we really aren't in control we're being guided but we're not in control of certain things and the more we surrender we're guided protected and we just need to do the next right action in life I'm, again, I'm in 100% agreement with you on that. Yes, yes. So now, what are there other books? You had that one mentor. Are there other mentors and books that really affected your life? Well, there are two books that, that I relate to uh, when people say, what are your favorite books? One is The Prophet by Gibran. Uh, there is more information on how to live your life in that book than any book that I've ever read. Mm. It's just, to me, it's brilliant. And the other, which moves more toward uh, the spiritual side is Jonathan Livingston Siegel by oh, Richard Mock. Yes. And uh, again, reading those two books for me mm -hmm. were, were soul changing, yeah. soul changing. Mm, yes, I love that book. The Jonathan Livingston Seagull. I actually got that book, I think when I was maybe eight, seven or eight, something, second grade, whatever that was. And it was a Christmas gift from a neighbor, um, Thelma, who was from Greece and um, her husband had passed. And she she um, was all alone and she would visit almost every day. Beautiful lady. And she gave me that gift. And and it was a little old, obviously, for a second grader, but maybe not because I really lived through that book. And I literally have it at home to this day. And my daughter, all my kids have read it. It was a really important book uh, for us and our family. Definitely. Great. Yeah, because it, it does. It does give you an opportunity to open your mind and see things from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And as I read it through the years, it, my perspective changed, mm -hmm. obviously based on age and experience in life. And I was like, Oh, was that what that meant? <laughs> and so, yeah, that's it. If you haven't gotten that book, um, Jonathan Livingston Siegel by Richard Bach is another incredible one. And so, yes, that's that's incredible. Now, what are your goals going forward, Rick, with your book? What is your hopes for your book and and um, for the future with all that you've done? Well, my hopes for the book, it, uh, it's online now at at zero profit. I'm mm -hmm. making no money on it whatsoever. I'm about to add five dollars to the cost of the book which I'm going to donate completely to St. Jude. It'll be a hundred percent donation. Mm -hmm. But my goal is for people 
to read through and see there's so many different aspects of how to take the negative and move it to positive. And there may be people who are dealing with some issues and mm -hmm. require some either greater clarification or more help. I've worked with a number of people, particularly on things like grief. Uh, but if I can, if I can have people contact me after reading the book, because there's something in there that resonates with them that they either want to know more about or that they would like some help with. My ultimate goal is to do that with people. So I want to get this out to as many people as possible. That's why I'm doing it at no profit whatsoever. I don't know if I've lost you, Sheila. This is really interesting. I had a spider yes. and then the computer went down and turned back on. And I said, keep talking, Rick. <laughs> 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 this doesn't happen. But there's something here. We're talking about energy and the magic of life and being guided and surrendering to what is when you can't control it. And so there it is, the perfect example of that. So you were, you were sharing about your plans. <laughs> Yeah, the, the idea that, that what I would like for the future is to be able to work with people, as I said, where there's a, a certain part of the book that resonates for them, a certain part of the book that they need, they think that, you know, would require some assistance, some guidance. Uh, I love working with people. I love sharing my experiences. And I also love the idea of being able to help people through difficult times into something that is more positive. Yes. Now, what would you say, going through your own health experience right now, um, to people out there that are also facing one kind of health situation or another, as far as, I don't know, some words of wisdom toward, toward that, you're doing so incredibly well. Again, this is very, very hard because this is so individualistic. Uh, everybody deals with their eventual demise or their serious illness in a different way. Uh, one very, very dear friend went into the world of spirituality to help her through her cancer. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, when it came to the end, she was upset that it didn't work for her. So we spoke Endlessly, she was one of my dearest, dearest friends, lived in the L.A. area. She actually lives a little south of L.A. Uh, but for her, she kept her attitude great by believing that she was going to continue for as long as she could with a high spiritual understanding and guidance mm -hmm. with other people. Uh, the idea of the big C or something like that can be devastating. But if you are doing what you need to do and can continue it, uh, despite whatever therapies you may have to go through and maintain an attitude that every day above the ground is a good one and that you're going to make it the best you can, that's how you're going to make it through. Because every day above the ground is a good one. Yes. And every day I do something that I'm going to enjoy, whether it's with my pet, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, that I, I you know, I, I love my puppy, oh. um, or whether it's something that, you know, I read or something that I listen to. Music is one of, one of my greatest uh, enjoyments in this world. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I'll just put the headphones on and go in to listen to some music. Mm -hmm. But if you can do that, if you can make your day something that you can take out of it a really positive aspect, then it doesn't matter what else is going on mm -hmm. because then each day that you have is going to be a good day. And speaking about having fun in life and celebrating every moment, 
I have found a way to bring natural, holistic cleaning supplies to my home, which makes me much happier. And speaking of my home, I have a new product that's making my home toxin free. And I'd like to give a special thank you and shout out to this episode's sponsor, Simply Earth. Before Simply Earth's essential oil recipe box, I had no idea how to actually use essential oils. I invested all this time and money into oils and then I end up not using them. So the solution came when I found Simply Earth Essential Oil Recipe Box, which helps me gain confidence and clarity in using essential oils to help make my home toxin free. First of all, I received the recipe box with four pure essential oils, six recipe cards and extras. Then I learned to use the essential oils while making the recipes created by certified aromatherapists. I saved money and I got to detoxify my home and life. Now this company, what I really love about Simply Earth is that this company also changes the world. Since Simply Earth gives 13% of all profits to end human trafficking around the world. The best part, the oils don't break my budget. Simply Earth's essential oils are affordable, so they are actually also 100% pure. Yes, even though they are affordable. They are actually, all of their essential oil recipes are tried and tested by in-house certified aromatherapists. The logic is that these essential oils alone would cost me over $100 from other companies, but with the Simply Earth Essential Oil Recipe Box, you get four pure oils, six recipes, and extra ingredients for only $39. And when you subscribe, you get a free big bonus box with even more natural goodies. Using oils to support your wellness does not have to be overwhelming. Have fun making your home toxin-free with Simply Earth's Essential Oil Recipe Box. Plus, get a free 80 milliliter essential oil diffuser when you subscribe using the URL simplyearth.com slash Sheila. That's simplyearth.com slash S-H-E-I-L-A. We have to just go by this living our best life each day and making a difference where we can. And that's that's surrender to the rest. Yes, that's exactly what we've been through uh, with 600,000 lives lost. Yes. It's, uh, it's unbelievable. And, and they didn't have, in many cases, the time to even begin to understand what they could do. Yeah. They just succumbed. Mm -hmm. And so, again, if you're fortunate enough to know what your reality is going to be, great. If you're not, then just live every day the best you can. Right, right. There's something about being in contribution, connecting with other people, laughter, a puppy. We adopted a puppy also during this COVID after, after losing my son, my daughter came to stay home with me after, you know, the dorms closed and she had already moved home um, because they were so close like you with your sister, I'm sure. Um, and so she moved home and she says, the only thing is I want a puppy. I need a, I need a therapy dog. <laughs> and not that it's officially a therapy dog. Right. But I, they all are, I think. And we went through the whole puppy year, which was a lot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, now the puppy owns us both and is, I think it's more my therapy dog than hers. I think maybe she got it for me. I'm not, I'm not sure. <laughs> but that, that is something that's so, so incredible. And I, I that dog travels with me everywhere. We've gone to the Grove all the time. We go to the Grove in California for there. Maybe I'll see you there. Mm -hmm. And we just go everywhere and get compliments because she's so well behaved. And it, it's just interesting because she didn't get a lot of training. It's just, it was almost like such a gift from beyond. This puppy was perfect for us. And I'm sure yours is perfect for you. Yes, a puppy is, uh, I I'm a, I'm a dog person, not a cat person, but this may apply to cats as well. A puppy is 
undeniably loving no matter what. Mm-hmm. Okay, there's no there's no limit to the amount of love they give. Yep, and that is an incredible gift. Mm-hmm. So if you have an animal and you've established a rapport with that animal, you're giving unconditional love. You are getting unconditional love. How much more of a gift can there be? Yes. And it's there's even therapy in hospitals, people that are not feeling well or trying to heal, getting back on track, that they bring in the pets. Right. dogs because they're easily easier to train i guess and there's something healing about that so even if you can just go to a shelter and and help out with the animals uh, there's there's so many opportunities i know years ago i did gray save and gray save is where the greyhounds um were being raced and abused i guess and they bring them over and um, you rescue them and train them and so we did that for many years and my children learned how to care for dogs and pets <laughs> with right. with gray save and then and I, I was working full time but i had summers off so it was per- perfect i was teaching at the time and so it was perfect cuz we did the summer and we would adopt in the summer but it was a a temporary foster training and we would do intense training and then send them to their permanent forever family they called it right and it was great because my kids learned how to care for a pet which later turns into how to care for um, family, friends, babies, all that. <laughs> so, Very yeah, true. yeah, they're so demanding. But then there was a lot of love and safety, and so it, it's just it, they heal us. And even horses. I have another friend who has a, a program in Florida. Um, I don't know if you know Zen or Jen, um, but it's a, a camp where people go to heal, and they go through a process working with horses as part of a therapy program. Interesting. I'm not familiar with it. Yes. And I actually went and visited all the horses at one time and they all have different personalities. And I was, I just, I would go up to the horse and I'd say, this one's like this. And she was like, how did you know? And I was like, I could feel, you could just feel it, see it a hundred percent. I was accurate. And so, because it just shows up if you're looking. Right. Exactly. As long as, again, if you're open to it, it just comes in. It's Mm -hmm. just, it's amazing. Mm, Yes. So um, we are coming to the end of our talking time. And I'd love for you to one more time share about where people can get your book, the name of your book and where they can get your book and learn more about all that you're doing. Sure. The name of the book is Before and Beyond Understanding. It can be purchased on my website with zero profit for me. The website is before www.beforeandbeyondunderstanding.com. There's also a Facebook page of the same name, Before and Beyond Understanding, where you can read a little bit more and see a couple of uh, expansions of some of the areas that I wrote about. Very nice. All right. Well, thank you again, Rick, for being a guest on the show. And for those tuning in, we will be back after these messages. Thank you so much. If you are just tuning in, this is NBC Sheila Mack Show here on KCAA Radio, the station that leaves no listener behind. I'm your host, Sheila Mack. And today I'd like to give a special thank you and shout out to Focus, a sparkling water drink with a spark. Focus is a delicious, health-conscious, thoughtfully caffeinated sparkling water infused with a boost of natural tea caffeine and the balance of L-thionine. You get the clean energy you want without the sugar, calories, or crash. It's the perfect caffeinated beverage that provides a jitter-free boost. It is simply made with a boost, balance, and some bubbles, non-GMO. So you can ditch your sugary sodas or energy drinks that are overloaded with sugar and other ingredients. It has 75 milligrams of caffeine derived from tea, zero calories, zero sugars, and zero sweeteners. Natural caffeine derived from tea gives you the same boost as an 8-ounce cup of coffee in a refreshing and thirst-quenching form. 
L-thionine, the secret hero of green tea, balances and mellows the brain-boosting benefits of caffeine so you stay alert and focused without stress or jitters. Your body needs water, and that doesn't mean it has to be boring. Their reverse osmosis water, lightly infused with crisp carbonation to refresh and hydrate without sugar or guilt. And there's a wide range of flavors, including blood orange, mixed berry, cola, cherry cola, root beer, crisp apple, grapefruit, yuzu, and lime, cucumber, and peach. And it can be found online at drinkfocus.com. For my listeners, you get a special discount by using the code Sheila, S-H-E-I-L-A, when you purchase your first order of Focus Drink. And it can be found online at drinkfocus.com. That's www.drinkfocus.com. And remember the code Sheila for your discount. This is Sheila Mack. Thank you again for tuning in. And I have some homework for you. So go and get your copy of the new bootstraps and bra straps, the formula to go from rock bottom back into action in any situation. It is now on Amazon, Audible, Kindle, and all major bookstores. And get ready to tune in daily as I share the business leader reboot. So that is starting a business, side business, or extra income. I don't care if you're starting from zero, rebooting, starting over completely. Completely. We are going to go through the steps over this year slowly together to rebuild, reboot, and reinvent your business and personal life or your career and personal life on your terms. And I will also be sharing about investing, um, investing in properties and how to get some passive income going this year as well. So stay tuned. If you are just tuning in, this is NBC Sheila Mack Show here on KCAA Radio, the station that leaves no listener behind. I'm your host, Sheila Mack, and I have a special free gift announcement for you. That's right. Get a free introduction to the Boots Formula and meditation by joining our email list for business leaders, busy moms, and rock stars like you. To get your free gift, just go to www.sheilamack.com slash free gift. That's right, sheilamack.com slash free gift. 